fortified wines are also frequently used in cooking, either as part of a reduction sauce or as a glaze for roasting meat. Examples of uh, fortified wines would be sherry, port, and Madeira. Fortified wine has additional alcohol added, usually um, brandy, and that uh, would make it 17 to 22 percent alcohol. Aperitif. Aperitifs are served before or at the onset of the meal, such as with the appetizer course. They're designed to stimulate the appetite. Examples would be champagne, Sauvignon Blanc, chilled sherry, or vodka martini. Those would all be called aperitifs. Sherry is uh, named after the town in which it's produced. The official sherry producing town in Spain include uh, Jerez de la Fortera, Puerto de Santa Maria, and San Luca de Parameda. To be called sherry, it must come from Spain. Made exclusively from white wine, which is often associated with many of the sweeter styles of sherry. The types of sherry are Fino Sherry, this is the driest sherry, with uh, live floor yeast cells present in the wine during aging. Since the yeast never dies, its presence acts as a preservative against oxygen. Fino is a light, pale, dry, and delicate style. Manzanilla, uh, manzanilla sorry, Sherry, a light, pale, delicate, and most pungent of the Fino style sherries. Amontillado, this sherry starts as a fino, and if the floor dies, it becomes an amontillado. This yields a light brown colored, nutty, and complex wine. Pairing strategies for the sherries. The fino type sherries are a great transition wine between summer and fall. They can be served at room temperature or slightly chilled. Their aromas and flavors are ideal for aperitifs with appetizers, soups, and some entrees. Fino and manzanilla pair well with appetizers such as tapas, little plates, with olives, olive stuff with blue or feta cheese, olive tapenade, various can canapes, spicy or smoky sausage, nuts, grilled shrimp, shrimp cocktail, salty ham, crudités, such as raw vegetable platters, such as carrots, bell peppers, and cucumbers, and with a dip. Oloroso type sherries pair well with custard or cream based desserts, such as rice pudding, creme brulee, creme caramel, pecan pie, and bananas foster. Chocolate based desserts such as chocolate cake, truffles, and chocolate chip cookies. As a breakfast syrup, reduce the wine in a pan over medium heat until it reaches a desired consistency for French toast, waffles, pancakes, and or breakfast sausage. First style of um, port that we'll talk about is barrel aged port. Barrel-aged ports have matured in a wood barrel, which allows the passage of oxygen. Tawny port, made from better, more concentrated grapes than ruby ports, and aged in wood for up to six years. Aged tawny port, this type of port is mellow and rich. Aged tawny, tawny ports are made from top grapes from excellent years, 10, 20, even 40-year-old wines, labeled according to the average age of the blend. Cuyata. Cuyata is a tawny port made of wines from a single year with the date of harvest appearing on the label.
pairing strategies with port. Port pairs well with roasted or grilled game such as venison, poultry, such as skin on duck or pheasant or grilled or smoked beef. Port wine also partners well with chocolate based desserts, test question, such as test answer actually, such as chocolate chip walnut cookies, flourless chocolate cake, chocolate truffles rolled in walnuts or dusted with cocoa. Port wine pairs well with dried or cooked fruit based uh, fruit based desserts such as pies, tarts and cobblers. It has uh, it goes well with rich pungent blue vein type cheeses and nut based pies like pecan pie. So for testing purposes remember port with chocolate based desserts, blue vein type cheeses and pecan pie. Then there's nectar or dessert wines. Dessert wines have become a general category for wines that are rich, potent, concentrated with some varying level of sweetness. this now here it is test question coming up test answers coming up matching wine and desserts the wine must be sweeter than the dessert the five dessert categories are fruit based dessert nut based desserts chocolate based desserts creams and custard based desserts pastry ice cream and cookie based desserts so fruit nut chocolate, creams, and cookie based. Sauternes are arguably one of the best and most famous of all the rot or mold based dessert wines from the Bordeaux region of France. You'd think they'd come up with a better term than rot or, <laughs> or mold, but that's what it does. So it turns are not a grape, but a blend of two grapes. General dessert pairing philosophies. A wine sweetness needs to be equal to or sweeter than the dessert. Otherwise, the wine will taste sour, tart, or bitter. The wine by itself needs to have enough sweetness, acidity, and or alcohol to carry the weight of the sweetness of the dessert. In some cases, a wine with intense concentration of fruit, even if it's dry, might work as a substitute for the lack of sweetness with some desserts. This might work particularly in the case of red wine and chocolate and certain grapes such as Viagene and Riesling. Fruit based desserts, the higher the acid of the fruit such as citrus or tree fruit like apples, pears, oranges and lemons, the higher the acid of the wine is found in cool climate desert wines such as ice wine. Fresh fruit will pair more effectively with dessert wines such as late harvest, ice wine, or enrichment wines. Dried and baked fruit desserts will pair more effectively with red based dessert wines such as dried grape or fortified wines. Nut based desserts. Nut-based desserts pair best with wines that have an oxidative quality, such as fortified wines or dried grape wines. Platter of toasted and lightly salted nuts, such as cashews, walnuts, and pecans, can pair well with fortified wines. If nut-based desserts incorporate fruit, such as mango and pineapple nut tart, an ice wine or a rot wine might work the best. And the fifth type of dessert uh, wines, pastry, ice cream, cookie-based desserts, 
A lighter airiness yet sweet of cakes and lady fingers can pair well with cool climate. Dessert wines such as ice wine or late harvest and enrichment wines. Late harvest and rot wines pair well with buttery honey or flaky pastry or cookies. Spiced pastries or cookies can work well with dried grape, late harvest, or rot wines. Pairing wine and chocolate. Dark chocolate can pair well with big, bold, and dry wines such as Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel. Since dark or bittersweet chocolate is intense and dry, it needs a wine that offers a dry sensation. Milk chocolate. Desserts based on milk chocolate and any combination of caramel, malt, or toffee can pair well with fruit forward, Pinot Noir, or Merlot. Fruit style sparkling wines. Uh, these wines, Rosé or Blanc de Noir sparkling wine, are fruity and act to counterbalance distinctive ingredients used in the food. Fruity styles partner well with cuisines that occasionally have spicy or pungent ingredients such as Japanese Thai or Chinese cuisine. So fruity style of sparkling wines or champagnes like rosé champagne go good with Japanese Thai or Chinese cuisine. Wine glass selections. It's important to get the uh, kind of glass because they, they're made that way for a purpose. The wine glasses are also uh, often referred to as stemware. There's three parts, the bowl, the stem, and the foot. It's believed that construction and shape of a glass can significantly improve the aromas and the flavors of a wine. So you have white wine glasses. The Bordeaux glass, which is for the red wines, uh, you see how that has a, a fatter shape to it so that the um, nice aroma of the red wine will, will breathe down at the bottom and then come up to your nose uh, in a, a smaller opening at the top. The ste stemless, fluted, which would be for champagne, saucer you can use for champagne or also for desserts and a fortified wine glass. Note what the Bordeaux looks like. Kind of fat at the uh, at the bottom and thinner at the top. When you're handling stemware, it's important to hold them by the stem, not by the bowl, to avoid smearing the glass with your fingerprints and also to avoid warming up the wine. Say goodbye to corks. 2% of all wine, 300 million bottles a year, are corked, meaning tainted by rotten cork. That, plus the fact that the world's about out of cork, is causing the industry to look at synthetic corks, which are hard to get out, and screw caps, which are unappealing, but really work better. Uh, you don't get corking. They're just easy to open, and they probably do a better job of uh, not allowing uh, any bad stuff to pass uh, through them. And uh, even at uh, high rent district, they've got uh, glass corks. Shouldn't say glass corks, glass uh, bottle closers. The screw caps are cheaper, don't need an opener. They preserve the fruit and acid qualities. So even the winemakers in uh, Napa that I saw and Sonoma, they were actually starting to embrace the screw caps. They don't have a lot of choice anyway. We're done. Thanks for taking the course. Uh, you are certainly exposed to a lot of information. I hope you found it useful, fun, intriguing, interesting, something you can dazzle your friends with, dazzle your boss with, and uh, actually use down the road. Any questions before you take the test, send me a note, give me a call, and good luck. We'll be just looking forward to having you be a certified beverage manager. Thanks a bunch, and see you down the road.